Hey there everybody, welcome back to the RC Garage. As you can see here, a lot of work has gotten done on the SCX-10 II. I did all this on stream the other day. Got it all put together. It was starting to get a little behind on the project because I want to get it done by January 28th. So I kind of threw it all together during the stream. But you can kind of see the color scheme I'm going to be going with. It's going to be a red and black color scheme. But enough about this, I got a package in today. It's the last piece I needed so I can start doing my body and get that ready. So I'm gonna bring you back once I have everything set up at the bench. Now this is the last thing I need to get started on my body. Never used this product before, I wanted to give it a try. It could add, it has the potential to add a lot of detail to your bodies by using comic books or magazine clippings, stuff like that. And you can glue it directly to the Lexan on the inside. And then you can paint over top of it. And this is Triple X Mains Lexan Picture Glue. And I'll have a link to this down in the description. And it's pretty simple to use. It does make it a little bit of a mess when using it. And I'll show you that in a little while. All right, the first thing you want to do when using this is lay something down to protect your work surface because you're going to get this stuff all over everything. Now, this is the first look for the theme I'm going with on this build. I really like comic books. I like Batman, but specifically I like one character out of Batman more than any, and that's Harley Quinn. So I'm going to be doing a Harley Quinn build. Cut this out. You just use a regular X-Acto knife. Cut it out of a comic book. Pretty straightforward. Now, what you do is you take your glue... A small sponge, which I get these sponges. I got them from Dollar Tree. They're just makeup sponges. They're real. They're not as porous as normal sponges, so it'll give a more even coat. And that's what you want. You want a nice even coat over the whole image. The first coat you do is over the face of the image. That's going to be stuck onto the body. And you just go along and... Dab it on there. Now this glue goes on white. It's supposed to dry completely clear, but like I said, I've never used it before, so we'll see what happens. Now you want to cover the whole image. And once there's glue on there, you're not supposed to touch it. Now you take your body. And the area that you were going to put that image needs to be scuffed up lightly. So just take a SOS pad or whatever. Now try to scoop the image up. Be really careful because now that it's wet, it's going to be more fragile. And then you lay it on the body. Now it doesn't dry right away, so you can move it around to get it lined up exactly where you want it. I'll take a clean rag and just really gently go around and try to squeegee out any air bubbles and extra glue and smooth out any of the wrinkles. Wipe up as much of the excess glue as you can get. If there's a little left over, it's okay because like I said, it does dry, it's supposed to dry completely clear. So it's, you're not going to notice it once it's all dry. And what you can do is flip it over, so that way you can see the front to see if you got any air bubbles that you need to work out. And that's it for the first one. Now this is supposed to dry completely clear, so we'll hope and see, because if it doesn't, then this picture's not gonna look very good and you'll have to peel it all off. I'm gonna go ahead and glue up the other pieces and I'll bring you guys back to show you what it looks like when it's all glued up. All right, now they're all in place. The next step you need to do is you go back over all the back sides of the images with another coat of the glue to seal them off. 
And that's all there is to it. Now, the instructions say to let this cure for at least 12 hours before you paint. So I doubt there'll be any painting today. Now I'm just going to go along and try to wipe up some of this extra glue on the outside of the image. Just in case it doesn't dry as clear as it says it is. Alright guys. I'm going to let this sit for about 12 hours. And I'll bring you guys back so you can see the finished product. Alright guys, I've given it about 24 hours for the glue to dry. It does dry pretty clear. You can see it a little bit just because it's, you know, it builds up on the body. I went ahead and added just a few little details to it to kind of bring it out a little bit. Went ahead and put all the window masks on. Got the fenders masked off. And got my letters put on. And I also went through and marked all my holes for drilling. So now it's time to put some base coloring on. I'm going to be using some Tamiya uh, polycarbonate spray paints. I'll have a link to everything I use so far in the description. But I'll bring you guys back once I get the red sprayed on. I would take the camera out there and show you, but I really don't want to mess up my camera. And I don't have a very good painting area, so I'll end up with paint all over the camera. But I'll bring you guys back once it's all done and show you what it looks like before I go on to the next step. Alright guys, we got the first color done. Just a heads up if you're going to be using Tamaya paint, their bright red polycarbonate paint is pretty transparent. I ended up putting five coats of the paint on here. And the last two coats were pretty thick. I was actually afraid there was going to get some runs in there. And then I even had to go behind that and throw a little bit of silver on there. I wasn't planning on using any silver on it. I was wanting to actually put the black on there and let it darken up a little bit. But but the Tamiya bright red paint is so transparent that I wanted to put something on there. I didn't want it to, you know, the black to bleed through the red. But now we got the painstaking part of unmasking everything. And I'm gonna try right here where the H and A overlap the window. Instead of just cutting that out and not painting those letters completely, I'm going to trim out the window mask and then remove it and just paint over the window itself. We'll see how that goes. First one I want to start with is this hood because I put tape directly over this glued on image here and I want to see if it's going to pull that image off. All right, so it did pretty good. It did lift just a little bit of the glue. I might've had an air bubble or something in it. It did lift a little bit of the glue right there. But it's not bad. It's just a little, it just lifted it up. The actual image is still on there good. I don't think that glue right there will really cause any issues. So we're gonna move on. I'm gonna trim this window mask and see if I can do it the way I was wanting to do. Now when you're dealing with these window or any masking, you always want to make sure you have a good sharp blade because if you feel any tearing, you're just going to get a rough cut and it's not going to paint nice crisp lines. So you make sure you got a good blade. You don't have to throw away the old blade if the tip's a little dull. Just put it aside. I actually have a little container that I put all the, the blades that have a, you know, a little bit of a rough tip. They're not cutting the paper really good, clean. I'll put those in a little container and use them for cutting styrene or anything else around the house. All right, got all the mask out of there. And see now, it'll just add a little bit of depth to it. You won't just have a plain blank window there. You can have some lettering there. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this mask and all this masking tape off. Everything pulled off, we're ready for the black. You know, like I said, there is a few spots here, like right here in this A pillar. The R and L really didn't get pushed down really good. So there is some red bleed through, which you'll see once I paint it black. But that's not a big deal for this build, because I do have all this grungy, messy paint look 
everywhere else. So it's not going to hurt it. So sometimes, you know, the imperfections are a good thing. But I'm going to take this outside, spray the black. And I'll come in and show you the finished product. All right, guys. Got everything painted. Put a little tint on the windows. Got the fender flares done. All the lettering. In the video, it looks kind of orange, but it's a, it's a bright red. It's a little more bright red than her outfit, but that's okay. But now this is the most satisfying part of any new body. Pulling the overspray film off. You really get to see what the body looks like. Because until you peel this film off, it really looks dingy. And there we are. Now I did remove some of the film over the fender flares because I didn't want them glossy. I pulled them off and hit them with a, I pulled them off and sprayed them with Tamiya's flat clear on the outside. That way it'll dull down some of that gloss. I never really care for fender flares that are glossy. It doesn't look realistic to me. I like it looks somewhat realistic, but that's the body. And that's going to be it for today. As always, guys, if you like this video, then let me know by hitting that like button. If you're new or want to see more RC-related videos, then hit that subscribe button. And join me back here every Friday for more RC fun at the RC Garage.